Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. You want to buy a laptop but you don't know what exactly to buy because we need to know what we have to look to buy a laptop for our specific application be it gaming, be it you're gonna use it for artificial intelligence, data science or cyber security whatever it is. So today we're going to see how to buy a laptop on what factors we need to know how big the laptop should be what operating system you should choose details about the processor the memory storages graphics card apart from that there are various other factors you need to look out while buying a laptop so by the end of this video you will know exactly which laptop you should buy for yourself be it, be it an engineering student a gaming enthusiast if you are looking for artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, or data science. So let's get started. So the first thing is you need to determine what size your laptop should be. If you're gonna be roaming around a lot, 13 inch is one of the best laptop sizes for you. 11 inch is basically too small, to be honest, 15 is okay. 17 inch is very good if you're doing a lot of work. Bigger the screen, it is better in terms of coding because in one glance, more lines of code can be in your screen and it's also very good for viewing movies, etc. If you're going to move around a lot carrying the laptop, 13 inch is one of the better recommendations for you. Just keep this in mind. But the 13 inch might not have that much processing power. 15 inch might be a good option if you want to carry it, even though it might be slightly heavier if you're carrying it around. But when you come home, you can connect an external display that is very big and use that instead operating systems basically we're going to look into chrome os windows mac and linux first of all let us move the chrome os out of the way it is a very lightweight os it can run in very minimum hardware basically if you're just going to browse watch videos do some document typing only that chrome os is recommended Otherwise, if you do anything apart from that, like gaming or whatever it is, don't go for Chrome OS. Keep it as a secondary device. Coming to Mac. Mac is like great. First of all, the app support is very, very good. For example, for video editing, Final Cut Pro is like none other software in the world. It is very, 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 very good. Even the Microsoft Office in Mac is kind of better than windows that's what is my opinion it is also very fast productivity you can do multitasking just like this move it here and there do your different different tasks look at the app drawer you have everything over here mac is also highly optimized for its hardware if you see windows right from basic missions to advanced missions for different different hardwares windows is kind of common but if you see mac it is limited to some hardware so it is highly optimized so you will get a higher performance out of the same hardware the only disadvantage is everything is paid and slightly expensive then windows do i really need to tell about windows you guys know about it coming to linux ethical hackers use it a lot now people are arguing that they can do everything in windows itself but yeah it's it depends if you want to do in Kali Linux, go ahead. If you want to do uh, in Windows, it is lightweight. Even for programming, it is very good. Mac is also very good for programming. You can run Xcode in it to develop iOS apps and you can build applications for Apple. Python runs very well in Mac and Linux compared to Windows. The installation is much easier according to my opinion. Moving on. Which processor should we choose? Should we choose Intel or should we choose AMD? Those two are the major companies. First of all, my recommendation is if you're going for Intel, choose these. Choose Intel Core i5 or Core i7, 8th generation and higher. Don't go for anything below that. Never ever buy these Pentiums or Core 2 Duo. In AMD, don't buy the APUs, AMD A series, A, A4, A6, A8, A10 and so on. Don't buy these. They do not have that good performance. If you are buying for AMD, choose Ryzen. It is very, 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 very good. 
AMD is cheaper than Intel, but it has very good performance. So buy AMD Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 by third or fourth generation. By looking at your laptop specifications, if you look at the spec for the processor, you will find some numbers like this core i7, then the processor number followed by a letter. So the common letters are U, K and H. U means ultra low powered use for low power devices to save a lot of power so that the power can be extended it is used in low powered notebooks. K unlocked processor meaning that the speed can be adjusted it can be increased if possible we can tune the processor then H basically means that it has a very good graphics in it yes the processor also contains inbuilt graphics in many of the cases so H when you see H it means that it has got uh, a very good Intel graphics in it. Apart from that, you will also see some E series, FX series in AMD, then Intel Xeon, which has a very good processor, and some notebooks also come with ARM processes. If you're going for AMD, buy the Ryzen series. If you're going for Intel, buy the Core series. How many ever number of cores you have that determines your multitasking capacity. The more number of cores, the more number of threads you can have, which means the more number of processing you can run. So generally, higher the core count is better until a state, okay? Always buy a processor with four cores or above. Don't go for the dual core ones. They are not at all good for today's standards. So when you're buying a processor, first check what company it is, what type it is, is it Ryzen? 7 or i5 check its type then see how many cores it has what speed it can run can it boost up to 5 gigahertz can it boost up to 3 gigahertz what is the base frequency 1.4 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz then what ram it supports which leads us into the segue of the ram buy ddr4 no arguments do not buy ddr3 those are older technologies supporting older processors which are slow so when you generally buy a good processor you will get ddr4 ram paired with it now many people say that 8 gb is more than enough for them but i would suggest you get 16 gb or higher in most of the cases 8 gb is enough yes but the extra room can help us to do a lot of things if you're running data science or AI applications those will use the RAM if you're running games some games even require up to 32 GB of RAM so getting higher RAM will help you a lot in the longer run we also need to check how many slots are there for example a laptop can have two slots your laptop might, might come with 8 GB RAM, meaning one 8 GB RAM might be inserted in one slot and the other slot might be empty for you to buy another 8 GB RAM and expand it into 16 GB. On the other hand, if the same 8 GB RAM comes with two 4 GB RAMs and if the slots are filled, if you're going to upgrade it, you need to buy two 8 GB RAMs again or one 16 GB RAM. So it is a waste of money. Therefore, it is a good practice to check out how many slots are free, how many slots are available and in those how many slots are free. RAM is the primary storage. Whatever the CPU is accessing, it accesses from the high speed storage called as RAM. But the RAM is not a permanent storage. We need to store our data permanently. For that, we have the secondary storages which has two types in it. The hard disk. HDD which has a physically spinning disk and then the SSD the solid state drive which does not have any physical mechanical components meaning the SSD is much 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 faster than HDD do not buy a laptop with only HDD if you're gonna buy a laptop with only HDD it is going to be terribly slow it is going to bottleneck the computer like anything even if you have very good specs, if your processor is good, if your graphics card is good, whatever it is and you have the physical hard drive running, the older technology running, it is going to slow your computer like anything. Therefore, buy a one which has SSD. SSDs are generally expensive. For example, one terabyte may cost around 10 to 11,000 rupees. The general practice is buy 256 GB or 512 GB SSD and run your OS and applications in it. If you are going to store more data like photos 
and videos a hard drive would be good enough so run your operating system in your ssd and store your pictures and videos in your hard drive so laptops kind of come in combination of ssd and hdd 1.8 gb of ssd is not recommended i would suggest you go for 256 gb and higher if you're a gamer on the other hand if you have those big games which are like 90 gb 60 gb 100 gb hard disk drive will slow them down you will not have the best gaming experience in that case we would recommend you to have full ssd buy a laptop which comes with ssd and hdd let the os run on the ssd replace your hdd with another one terabyte or two terabyte ssd then your system will become fully ssd you have your OS running in one SSD and your games running in another SSD. You just spend around 10 or 11,000 more if you are a full fledged gamer and it will improve your experience drastically. Speaking about games, here comes the graphical processing unit which is like the heart of the gaming experience. Just like we saw Intel and AMD are competing for processors, we have Nvidia and AMD competing for graphics. NVIDIA generally has three types of graphics. The GTX, the newer RTX, which two are consumer grade electronics, and then the Quadro, which is the professional grade graphics card. What about AMD? Do not buy AMD if you are a data science or artificial intelligence person, because AMD do not have drivers to support your programs at the moment. NVIDIA only has the programs to run deep learning at least so far in the future it might come but at the moment we do not have and I highly suggest you buy NVIDIA NVIDIA is not bad either it is very very good therefore when you are buying a GPU look at how many cores it has CUDA cores if you are buying GTX it will have only the CUDA cores but if you are buying the newer technology RTX it will have CUDA cores Tensor cores which support especially for multi-dimensional data that we run in artificial intelligence. It also comes with ray tracing technologies, ray tracing cores. So if you're going to buy a graphics card and you have a little bit of extra money lying around, I would highly suggest you to invest it in the RTX series. Do not buy a DDR3 graphics no matter what. Buy a GDDR5 or GDDR6. These are the latest technologies. Coming to the VRAM or how much memory it consists, this one is different from the system RAM. This is the memory for the graphics card. So generally buy memory which is greater than 4 GB because when you are running your deep learning applications, you can have a higher batch size. Some laptops come with two graphics cards. So check how many graphics cards your computer has. So that really impacts on the performance. If you are a content creator, Having one screen is never enough. We generally have more than one screens, at least two or even three or four in some cases. Therefore, we have to check how many screens the graphics card can support. Which leads us into what screen should we buy. The physical laptop screen, the display, we have options like 1080p, 1440p, 2K and 4K. I would suggest you go with the 4K if possible. 2K is also a very great option, especially if you're using the 13 inch like a MacBook Pro. Don't go for 1080p, try at least 1440p. Do not go for 1080p unless you're cornered into one particular option because if you're going to be viewing your screen for the whole day, say 8 or 10 hours per day, having a good quality screen is very important for your eyes. Your eyes are very, very important. Therefore, have some care for them and choose your screen wisely. When you're looking for a screen, look at its size. What is the physical size? Is it 13 inch, 15 inch or 17 inch and so on. What resolution does it run? 1080p, 1440p, 2K or 4K? Brightness, how bright can the screen become? Is it 300 nits, 400 nits, 500 nits, 600 nits? How much? Buy a screen that has a brightness of 450 nits and higher so that you can work under ambient sunlight. Coming to the refresh rate. How many times can your screen refresh per second? If you're a gamer, if you're a fast paced gamer, 
then you would need the fastest refresh rate for example 240 hertz 144 hertz and so on otherwise if you're just going to be working uh, for programming movies or whatever 60 hertz display will be more than enough speaking about the aspect ratio how is your screen is it thin and long or is it slightly more like a square that says about the aspect ratio in some cases it might be very important speaking about audio if you're not going to use the headphones having very good speaker drivers is very important we also need to see what other technologies are there for our sound like Dolby Atmos. Does it have a dedicated sound card which powers the speakers as well as our headphones jacks? We have to look into that. Battery. Let's say we have bought a very powerful laptop. We are very excited going for a programming workshop in an auditorium which does not have power outlet in our seats. We go to the 8 hours workshop with a 4 hour battery runtime laptop but then the laptop dies around 2 and a half to 3 hours. How bad it is. Therefore getting a laptop with a very good battery runtime is crucial if you're going to travel here and there. If you're going to sit and game in your home it is fine. If you're going to travel, if you're a student or a professional getting a laptop with higher battery capacity is crucial, it is mandatory. So we have to see how long can the laptop run with the battery and what is its actual capacity, how many amp hours can it hold. In some cases we have removable batteries so that we can simply swap them out. Which leads us to question, is this battery used only by our laptop? Are they used by anything else? In the future will we get spares? You might have a very good graphics card in your computer. Your computer might be very powerful. You know what? Your battery might not be able to power your graphics card. Yes, even my laptop is like that. The battery cannot give out so much of power that is being used by the graphics card. So whenever we connect the power adapter, whenever we connect the charger, then our graphics card comes to its full power otherwise it cannot run in your battery that's an important factor to consider depending upon your needs speaking about track pads the bigger the size the better they are generally what kind of click mechanism do they have because in some laptops in one corner if you press you just need to slightly touch and you will get the click in another corner you need to press really hard so you will not have a very even experience in your clicking therefore checking the mechanism is crucial then what kind of feedback do you get do you get a quick snap or is it sloppy or do you feel like the spring is too weak or too strong getting the ample amount of feedback is necessary so that we can work for long hours without getting a finger pain yes fingers can ache if the trackpad is not good what kind of gestures they can support and some trackpads come in a dotted texture after using it for a while the fingers start to burn therefore keeping an eye on all of that is very important generally speaking macbooks have the best trackpads all around the world speaking about keyboards we need to buy keyboards with scissor switch mechanism for the best experience if you're a person who can close your eyes and type continuously, you might not need the backlight, but for others, I would suggest the backlight. It's extremely useful. Keyboard is one of the first points of failure. Therefore, having a reliable keyboard in the laptop is very, very important. Coming to connectivity, if you have, if you're going to use Wi-Fi, make sure that you have Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz at least. Wi-Fi 6 is the latest technology, but having 5 gigahertz is mandatory. 2.4 gigahertz is standard. It'll be that, but have 5 gigahertz. How will you check whether you have 5 gigahertz? Go to the Wi-Fi specifications under the networking. You'll have something like 802.11 a slash b slash g slash n and you also need to have ac in that series i might have messed up the series but then in these letters you should find ac if you find ac then that is 5 gigahertz if you do not then you do not have 5 gigahertz if you have the wi-fi 6 that is best the latest technology it's got everything if you're going to travel a lot some of the laptops come with sim card connectivity you can use 4g to access your network 
Speaking about Bluetooth, you don't need to worry about it because most of the laptops come with Bluetooth 4.0 or higher, which is generally good enough. Speaking about ports, having the highest number of USB 3.0 or super speed ports are recommended. Apart from that, we also need to have audio, ethernet and HDMI port. Some of the laptops nowadays come with a USB-C Thunderbolt in which we need to connect an external USB hub which gives us all the other ports. One of the most common problems faced by many of us is the laptop is too heavy. We buy a 3.5 kg laptop with very good performance but we need to carry it all around with its 1.5 kg charger so the laptop and the charger comes around 5 kg apart from that we need to have a water bottle books and other materials in our bag which might weight which might weigh around 7 or 8 kgs carrying that much burden is very very bad therefore having uh, a laptop that is mobile enough for us is very important if it can hold good amounts of charge we might not even need the power connection might leave that and go with lightweight devices it's a very important factor for girls especially to consider now we have got idea on the essential components of the laptop after that the build quality is very very important see what material your laptop is made up of is it made up of aluminium and magnesium or is it fully made up of a cheap plastic if it is fully made up of metal, if there is any problem with your power adapter, your laptop might get hot with 110 or 230 volts. A shocking hazard is over there. We do not want a laptop that is fully made up of cheap plastic which cracks, warps over time. After you have chosen your laptop, go to a physical store, take it in your hands, see how good the material is. Is it flexing a lot or is it rigid? what shape it is if you consider the predator laptops and all they have a bulge from their back so if you're packing it for somewhere that causes a havoc in many of the cases many people consider aesthetics meaning they want to have a laptop that looks really really good me i am kind of a function over form person we want the laptop that has a very good build quality which can give a long life out of it Having failed ports, the USB, USB ports might not work, the display port might not work. I knew a person who had to replace his laptop because HDMI port was made up of a cheap connector, it got damaged. The spare wasn't available so the service center could not replace it. Therefore he had to replace his entire laptop. He's a teacher and he needs his HDMI port a lot. Thermals very important guys you do not want all the heat to be exhausted into your lap and we do not want our body to get hot it's extremely bad we also need to see from where the air gets drawn into the laptop for its cooling is it getting drawn from the bottom which is bad we want the air to be drawn from its sideways and ejected sideways not to our body having a cooler laptop which is physically comfortable to hold and work with is very important Apart from the specifications which are interesting, getting this graphics card, getting i7 processor, that is exciting, yes, but in the real life when you are using it for many hours, you really need to see the build quality. Coming to warranty, what kind of components do does the warranty cover? Let us read the warranty before we purchase it. Does it cover the keyboard which is one of the first points of failure in the laptop? How long is the warranty for? One year, two years or three years or even five years some companies offer that. If you are traveling internationally, will the warranty be covered in that particular country? And if we are getting an extended warranty, how much does it cost? These are the factors to be considered while buying a warranty. Coming to the ecosystem. When I say the word ecosystem, which word comes to your mind? Yes, that is the Apple. If you already got your iPhone, your watch and the iPad, then probably getting a MacBook will finish it. All of the devices can work together, talk to each other and give you the best experience. Ecosystem might not seem so important, but in the long run, when all of the devices are talking to each other, working together, it actually increases our productivity because we are faster. Finally, getting a future-proof laptop is very important. You do not want to buy older technologies right now because in the future, 
you will need power to run the applications right now a lot of vr ar applications are being run and the apps they themselves come with machine learning and deep learning so you need the power to run the applications so i will highly suggest to get a laptop which has latest specifications so in the future it will not get so updated we also need to have the hardware in such a way that the future softwares that are being updated to the newest computers should be compatible with our computers. We do not want the hardware to be too bad so that the software cannot be installed in ours. We need to get the latest operating system and the updated softwares. Speaking about ports, we know how bad the VGA display port got outdated and people are using HDMI. We are moving towards USB-C and Thunderbolt. That is the new future. So if you are having a laptop without USB-C Thunderbolt, in one or two years the ports are definitely going to get outdated. So that is one of the spot we need to keep our eye on. Multiple devices, one charger might be enough in most cases. We saw so many different things that we need to consider while buying a laptop but then most of them are interrelated choosing your laptop form factor is it 13 inch or 15 inch or 17 inch generally determines how big of a display it has how much battery lifetime it can give you how much of a performance it has how good it is in cooling itself if you take the macbook pros they are very thin and they have got a powerful processor in them which means the body cannot actually cool them the processor will be overheating and you cannot get the full performance from that processor always therefore in most cases many of the factors are interrelated to each other so we need to balance them out and get what's best for you when you're buying a laptop don't just have your budget for your laptop you need that for accessories as well you might like a better mouse a gaming keyboard with a good mouse pad you want some good pair of headphones and mic external hard drives if required and in some cases cooling pad as well so kindly see what accessories you will need and expand your and plan your budget for it and that leaves us into the segue of the budget so we have different categories laptops less than 50,000 then 50,000 to 1 lakh 1 lakh to 2 lakhs 2 lakh and above let us see what laptops we need to buy generally i would not suggest laptops that are 50,000 or less because they are using older technologies and are being sold for a high price those technologies do not give you the value like the newer technologies give one of the best budget range to buy is from 1 lakh to 2 lakh rupees considering gaming data science artificial intelligence cyber security whatever it is now we have an understanding about the specifications what each thing does and what to buy and what not to buy now for artificial intelligence data science and cyber security what are the specifications that we need to keep an eye out for so speaking about processor ai requires the highest amount of processing power data science after that cyber security you can run away with a decent processing power Coming to memory, I would highly suggest getting 16 GB or higher in all of the different domains because artificial intelligence, data science, yes, will be running machine learning and deep learning programs, so you need a higher memory. Why do cybersecurity guys need a higher memory? In cybersecurity, many people run Windows. Within Windows, they open up a virtual machine to run Linux or different different operating systems. Therefore, having a higher bit of ram is suggested for them as well if they want to fully run linux no problem 8 gb of ram is still sufficient but having 16 gb and future proofing your laptop is important now let us come to the graphics card to be honest data science does not need a graphics card because whatever you're doing you're most probably going to be doing in your processor so, so getting a good process is mandatory but if you're having a good processor, that means your laptop would most probably come with a good graphics card as well. Coming to artificial intelligence, bare minimum get GTX 1050 Ti. Nothing lower. You need 4 GB of graphics minimum like we saw. Cyber security, do you need a graphics card? If you're running virtual missions, probably you could use the extra VRAM. An operating system. For artificial intelligence, Windows is recommended. Why not Mac? In most cases, the basic MacBook Pro does not have a graphics card. And even if Apple has a graphics card, 
they use amd which is not currently supported by deep learning at the moment so we need to use windows and nvidia data science you can use windows mac or linux because most probably you're going to be using python which runs great in all three to be honest you can choose a mac because you need a good CPU. Macs come with good CPU. They are very good for programming. The softwares get installed easily both in Mac and Linux. I mean the Python libraries when I say softwares. For cybersecurity, I'm not very well versed about Mac, but I know most people use Linux. Some people use Windows and install the appropriate tools. So artificial intelligence, Windows only, data science, you can go with Windows, Mac or Linux. Most probably you'll be having Linux as the first priority and Windows the second. Now you'll have a question, do laptops come with Linux? Most probably they won't. You need to buy your laptop, you need to do the hard drive partition and then you need to install Linux on your own. That is a video for a separate day. Okay, if you say you do not need that much processing power, I would like to have a laptop with more convenience. I want it to be lightweight, I want to do some art in it. Get these convertible laptops. They can work as a tablet, they have touch, they are generally light in weight. They have more physical features when compared to these laptops. If you're not a gamer, you can probably run away with this. You've got a pretty powerful laptop in your mind. That is what suits your requirement. You're either an artificial intelligence engineer or data science or cyber security guy, but you're also interested in gaming. So no matter what, you want that powerful GPU and your laptop is beefier. Um, you want that gaming experience when you come to your home, but you also need to go to your classes and come back or carry it wherever you go. In that cases, one laptop might not solve all your requirements. You, you have the powerful laptop in your home. Use a secondary laptop. Use a Chromebook if you're just going to type out your documents, notes. If you're going to browse or watch videos from your bed, you need something that is lightweight and good to handle. In that case, use Chromebook or iPad. Less than 25,000 rupees and you can get a good notebook, a tablet or an iPad. Let me give you some suggestions in different budget ranges what you can buy. 50,000 or low, like I said, that is not recommended. But if you, ha if you are in the range of 50,000 to 1 lakh rupees, Asus Tough FX505 is very good because it has AMD Ryzen 5 with DDR4 RAM. RAM that comes with 8 GB but can be extended up to 32 GB. It has 4 GB of graphics card which is GTX 1050. You can get this laptop for around 50,000 rupees and install more RAM, re replace your uh, hard disk with SSD and for less than 60 or 65,000 rupees you will have a very 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 good laptop that could run your programs and might be decent in gaming. Let us go to the next interesting budget, 1 lakh to 2 lakh rupees. Out of many of the options, this laptop is good because it's got a very good i7 processor with state-of-the-art graphics card nvidia rtx 2060 it's awesome it also has a one terabyte ssd and of course 16 gb ram if you're having such high budget you can definitely buy this what about two lakhs and above honestly guys you won't need it you're getting an rtx 2060 that can handle most of the heavy games you won't need laptops for more than two lakh rupees to be honest you can get away with this even this is very high if you're a gamer generally consider about the gpu the graphics card that is very important if you're a non-gamer uh, you don't need to consider about the graphics card just stick with the other parameters all right ladies and gentlemen let's speak some truth here are we really going to do such a big project the search all by ourselves that we need so much of computing power is it possible that our company or the institution that we are in would contain such a powerful server? So we just need to develop the program and we can load it onto the server, give it the big data set and that can do all the large processing for us. If you are actually working for a company, then most probably they are going to give us the data set. If it is very big like 1 million or 2 million images are there in the data set, what we can do is we can develop the program in our system, take 100 or 200 samples, probably even a thousand samples, and then run the program, test it 
if it works properly then we can load it onto the server train it to the required thing optimize it blah 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 everything can be done from the server if you need a computing power, if you would like to have some a fair bit of computing power in your laptop, yes, fine, no problem. If you are a gamer, yes, you can get the GPU, have it, enjoy, play your games. Otherwise, if you think all of this is unnecessary, if you have access to servers worldwide, you can just rent the server. Even if your company or institution does not have a server and you want to train a bigger data set on your own, what you can do is you can rent servers like aws microsoft azure you rent servers just pay a couple of dollars get the servers for a couple of hours they got so much of processing power that will do the millions of images training in few hours and it will give it to you so you just need to pay a few dollars in order to do your processing you don't need to spend thousands of dollars so you guys decide you need such a powerful gpu need such a laptop you guys decide if you have the money lying around no problem invest it it's a good investment you can use it anytime if you don't have the budget but you're in a situation that you need to buy a laptop then you can slightly hold back and consider these options let's say you have a fair amount of money you don't want the heavy gaming laptop you want a laptop in which you can do all the programming you want lightweight laptop and you want it to have a lot of battery life in that case you can consider these two the macbook pro which is around 1.5 kgs and it comes with a 10 hour battery life then microsoft surface laptops are very good you get around 14 hours of battery lives so you have windows and mac option if you're basically a programmer mac is very good macbook pro handles machine learning very well it is very good in that if you need deep learning, a bigger data set, use the servers, just like we discussed. This is a very common question that I get regularly. Which laptops do I use? As a daily driver, I use the MacBook Pro. Why? Because, first of all, I like the operating system. It is lightweight comparatively. Even that 1.5 kg feels heavy, guys. That's the truth. It's very comfortable to use. It's got a great display. When we are using, when we are viewing seven or eight or even ten hours into the screen, we should make sure that we have a good display. So these are the roundup factors that I use MacBook Pro as a daily driver. Apart from that, for a little bit of gaming, I use the Dell G7. It's got a six-core i7 processor, eighth gen. It's got a GTX 1060, 16 GB DDR4 RAM. 256 GB SSD and 1 TB HDD and I might upgrade the 1 TB HDD into 1 TB SSD soon if required. This does not have a 120 hertz screen or 144 hertz screen. I chose this for its build quality. It's so sturdy in this price point. It costs around 1.3 lakhs and MacBook Pro also. That's the base model which costs around 1.2 lakhs. I didn't want uh, an even powerful laptop because I was just using it for mild tasking but still I do programming in it. It's very good for that. This Dell G7 can take a fair bit of hairy programs. It can run slightly complex neural networks. It's very good in that. Apart from that, I have this Lenovo IdeaPad 500. Uh, this contains, this is basically an older laptop with DDR3 8GB memory, an AMD A10 8700P APU, and 2GB Radeon graphics. I use this for basic CAD drawings and all. So, what I do is whenever I go to companies, I don't want to carry the weight daily, so I just leave it in the office go and come back that's why i use this a lot kindly comment out what laptop you already have why you chose it or if you're deciding to buy a new laptop kindly leave it in the comment section uh, if you're deciding to buy a new laptop or have already bought it kindly comment in the comment section so we all can know what your choice is thank you so much ladies and gentlemen have a nice day